Hey, everybody, Tom Barnes, stories from the 78. This one up in Niles, where my friend Yara is talking to me right now. And Yara, you are part of the Ukrainian Women's Association of America, which is based right here in Chicago. I did not know that. Yeah, it is. The Ukrainian Women's Association of America. We are a nonprofit with about 30 or so, or so Ukrainian American women. Um, we're all professionals. We're all members and what uh, what we have in common is that we're all Ukrainians. Some of us came here as small children, some of us came here as teenagers, some of us came here as adults, but we have the same unifying mission in that we wanna help kids in Ukraine, um, especially with the war happening. Um, there's a lot of need for it, especially children who are now orphans due to the war, children whose own um, foster homes or own orphanages were bombed out in the East and the South. Um, and any really our mission is to ensure Ukrainian children lead healthy and happy lives. And with that change, that's how our efforts are going towards that today. Yeah, I imagine just based on what's happened right in uh, the last year or two uh, in Chicago, having a very large Ukrainian population with Ukrainian village that is right in the city by like West Town, if people are familiar. So I imagine just that and, um, you know, the big there's a big Polish community here in Chicago as well. So a lot of Eastern Europeans here uh, trying to do right by one another. Right. Absolutely, um, and you're spot on. I think Ukrainian, uh, I think Chicago has something like 100,000 Ukrainians in it. And I think that was census before uh, the refugees started coming in after the war started, part of the u for u program. There's something like 15 churches that are Ukrainian in the Chicagoland area. So a huge population here dating back to the beginning of the 20th century. In fact, Ukrainian village was founded where it's at because of St. Nicholas Cathedral that was built like in 1908 or so. Um, I might be off by a few years there, but usually populations settle around where they have that community base. And for a long time, it was churches. So that's why Ukrainian village is where it is today. And you have something uh, pretty important that you just did a benefit for, but it is for the city of goodness. Talk about that and how your organization works with that particular branch. Absolutely. Um, City of Goodness is a safe haven. That's what I like to call it. It really started as a women's shelter. It's located in western Ukraine, closer to the Romanian border in a city called Chernivtsi. Um, prior to, they opened their doors in 2020, as I said, as a women's shelter where mothers would escape kind of horrific and abusive situations. And they had everything from psychological help, um, you know, uh, psychologists on the ground, medical staff on the ground. Um, to help these women and their goal was to have them become independent so they even had like courses on how to sew um, so that they started going through different career paths fast forward 2022 the war starts their phones are off the hook because of the need of people fleeing right so right they yeah. open their they open their doors and what before maybe was a dorm room with a, just a mother and their her child. Now they had had three families crammed in there. So there was a huge need to continue to expand and build out the campus. So in 2022, um, our organization, our group of women, through everything of selling merch at Ukrainian festivals to selling cookies at, you know, ch uh, after church on Sundays, we raised upwards of $80,000 that year that we donated wow. on to City of Goodness specifically, mm -hmm. and they built on a th another building. So now they're able to house upwards of 500 victims, um, and that includes children, elderly, and mothers escaping horrific situations. Right, and unfortunately, the horrific situation doesn't look like it's ending anytime soon with uh, dealings with Russia and what's happening there. So. That's why organizations like this are so important. And, you know, kudos to the women here in Chicago who really, uh, you know, putting a spotlight on some of the needs that are happening over in the Ukraine. It's, as you were saying, the city of goodness right there on the Romanian border. Um, it's just, it's, a, it's incredibly sad what's happening, but uplifting for the work that all of you women are shedding a light on. So kudos to you all. How can folks get involved if they want to donate, if they want to volunteer? If I mean, I don't know. Do you guys do stuff where you send any volunteers here to go out to the Ukraine to help with this? So this was really, um, not specifically, but we do have different fundraising events. We're always taking donations. Uh, remember to run a safe haven like this. It's 24-7 care. 
I actually visited City of Goodness twice. I was there last summer and the summer before. So even during wartime, we're making sure we're going through and vetting the situation on the ground. And we're vetting that the funds are actually being used properly, right? By people from our own organization, myself included, right? So I've met the founder, I've been there, I've seen the kids, I've talked to the moms. Um, so, you know, we, we know that it's going to good work. Um, so my recommendation would be find us on Facebook, find us on Instagram. You can find us under UWAA um, underscore help or um, Ukrainian Women's Association of America if you are on Facebook. Um, and the other thing I did want to mention about City of Goodness that um, last summer they actually expanded even more. Um, they opened both a place for not just you know, kids and people escaping horrific situations, but they actually have a un unit where they have like stray dogs that they pick up, that they refoster and are actually part of their canine therapy program. So it's a really special place in that way. They also opened a hospice and rehabilitation center where they have something up like a few dozen spots for kids who are like terminally ill and don't have anyone, right? Don't have parents, don't have foster parents. And they have some um, serious illnesses like cerebral palsy, you know, things that are incurable. Um, and there's caretakers there and medical staff that help them through that. So a lot of good work in this place. Um, but yeah, so reach out to us either way on Facebook or Instagram. That is the Ukrainian Women's Association of America right here in Chicago. Thank you so much for taking time to chat with me today and continue to do the great work and make the people of Ukraine and Chicago and everybody around the world uh, proud for this work you're doing. It's inspiring. Thank you so much, Tom. I appreciate your time.